Hi, Tom Richardson for Boating Local, and I'm here in Bristol, Rhode Island at GMT Composites. Now, GMT is on the cutting edge of carbon fiber technology, and we're going to take a look inside, see how they go about building carbon fiber booms, masts, rudders, and other sailing components. Inside, I met with GMT's owner and chief engineer, David Schwartz who explained that the process of building a mast, boom, or other sailboat component starts with a conversation with the customer to understand his needs. Schwartz's extensive knowledge of sailing and experience in working with carbon fiber material combined with computer-assisted design software allow him to create a product that's light yet strong and able to withstand severe loads. Once the design is finalized, construction begins. Jonathan Craig, GMT's Director of Sales and Marketing, walked me through the steps for making some of the company's large masts and booms. Depending on the size and design of the component, construction may require male or female tool. The former involves large aluminum mandrels around which the carbon fiber material is applied. We've been building carbon masts since 1989 and we've done a ton of different vessels so we have all that tooling in-house for whatever your boat may be whatever your needs in a mask we've got the tooling for it generally and these are made of aluminum these are aluminum mm -hmm. mandrels yeah yep. and that's what we use the prepreg carbon around to get the form and then you pull it out after it's done okay cool yeah. female tooling on the other hand involves a two-part mold or tool into which the carbon fiber is laid to create the final shape of course, the star of the show is the carbon fiber material itself, which is pre-impregnated with resin and refrigerated to keep the resin from curing or hardening until it's time for the layout. Inside of our freezer pack here where we store the pre-preg carbon, you have to keep it at freezing temperature so none of the resin set uh, before you get it into use and into the oven. Cut. Next, Craig showed me to the layup area where the two-piece mold for a 76-foot mast was under construction. This is the last tool. We'll do the tooling and then okay. we'll move into the material. Okay. So, Jonathan, this is the carbon fiber pre-preg material that, was, uh, that we saw in the freezer, right? Exactly. This is the spool that's coming out of those boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, we move it out of the freezer, get it to room temperature. This is a climate-controlled room for the layup. Mm -hmm. Consistent temperature, consistent humidity, so there's no changes. Carbon prepreg is basically just the unidirectional, meaning all the carbon fibers are going in the same yeah, direction. Yeah, you, you can see it. Yeah. yeah, you can see the lines. Those are just individual toes of carbon. Mm -hmm. It's been pre-impregnated with the epoxy resin at the exact ideal ratio that we're looking for. So there's no excess or there's anything? There's no excess. There's no excess weight, and it's the ideal strength once cured. And GMT specs out certain resins for different applications, so everything is customized and built to meet the, the design specifications. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, what are we looking at here? So here we've got that prepreg carbon. It's been pre-cut into individual strips depending on the design specifications of the mast with individual layers of reinforcement where you're going to mount a winch or a cleat mm -hmm. or just different design loads in the particular mast where the shrouds may attach, for example. So they've been pre-cut, they get laid into a specific schedule mm -hmm. into the tool, and then as every few layers will go through a debulk process where it gets put into that vacuum bag and compressed down, then take the vacuum's taken out, and then we go into the next layer. It just builds on itself until you're complete, and then we can move it into the oven. Mm -hmm. So Tom, here we've got a tool for our larger mass. It's a female tool, just like on the booms, when you get above a certain size, it just becomes more practical to make the product in a female tool versus a male tool that you build over. Right now, this is in a phase called a debulk, where the prepreg, four or six layers of prepreg have been laid in, mm -hmm. and we're compressing it under vacuum pressure of anywhere 26 to ideally 28 pounds of pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's this tool. On this side, we've got the other half, which will be later joined with the product coming out of the other male tool. They go together. They usually fit like a glove. Once the layout process is completed, the molds are moved to a giant oven where they are cooked under a vacuum at a range of temperatures to assure proper curing and to eliminate any voids or resin-free areas in the carbon fiber. That's uh, the big oven, huh? That's a big oven. That's where the tooling moves out of the layup room and rolls right into the oven. It's 65 feet long and we cure that prepreg carbon at a constant 250 degree temperature. For how long does it have to bake in there? 
Hey, Rich, how long do we bake it? Five hours? <laughs> Four hours. Four hours. <laughs> there it's, we go. It's uh, quite, a, quite a recipe. There we go. A recipe for great boat building. That's right. That's <laughs> just what Cal Prefrag likes. Once the two female molds are removed from the oven, the halves are chemically bonded using a specially formulated two-part epoxy. Parts created around a mandrel are also cooked, but in this case the mandrel is simply removed from the part, leaving a hollow carbon fiber shell. So Jonathan, this is the finished, or, or the baked, if you would, the baked goods. That's right, <laughs> yeah, this, this is a mass that's out of the oven. It moved out of the laminate room into the oven with the tooling still inside of it. Came out of the oven, we removed the mandrel from the center, so we're left with the cured carbon prepreg structure that was around that tooling. Mm -hmm. This is a mass that's uh, going on a Hylus 56. It's about 78 feet long, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Rich is right now is doing the rigging on it, making all the cutouts for where halyard <laughs> exits will be, winch bases, any type of spinnaker system that's going on. The mass track will get laid up in a little bit. So we're doing all the, the rigging prep for the hardware that goes on the mast now. So here you can see some of the external reinforcements that are in the mast itself that were done in the layup room. This is where a spreader attachment will go on this particular mast. And then as you move up the mast, we have different connections. The inner four stay goes in here, obviously. And then we'll go up and we'll be inserting a carbon fiber mast head at the top with all the shivs. So uh, these are just some of the different finishes you guys make, right? That's right. These are showing some of the all-grip color options. These are different mass sections that we have. Obviously, this is for a rather large vessel. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. With a <laughs> roller furling mainsail on it. Uh, but it's a great example of the faux bois finish that we're capable of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it looks just like the real thing. It's just impossible almost to tell yeah. the difference. Uh -huh. But it's that classic look of wood with the performance and, and advantages of carbon. Many owners prefer the sleek, modern look of the unpainted carbon fiber, and GMT is happy to do that too. After the painting stage, various fittings and other hardware are installed, and the product is packed and shipped out on a huge flatbed truck. Hey Jonathan, well thanks a lot for showing me around the facility and, and how you make these incredible products. I really, uh, really appreciate it. It's very, very educational. Hey, well thank you. It's great to have Boating Local here, Tom. I appreciate you coming down. All right, anytime. Thanks.